Welcome to your first Excel tutorial for environmental chemistry. So I'm using Microsoft Excel on a Macintosh, but you could certainly use Microsoft Excel on a Windows machine. 95% um, of the features are identical. Um, what you'll find is that some of the menus at the top are a little bit different. And I'll leave it to you to figure out how your OS-specific version of Excel works. I like to begin an Excel spreadsheet by putting my name and the date on the top. That helps me keep track of what I'm doing when I'm looking at this spreadsheet a few years in the future. I'm going to begin with some inputs. Then I'm going to have an area here where I do calculations. And then I'm going to add in a couple of graphics and equations and then finally a plot. So that's the way I set it up. But uh, it, it's up to the individual as to how you're actually going to set up your spreadsheet. So, if you remember from the homework assignment, the, the goal of this exercise is to calculate the steady state water level in a bathtub. The concept of steady state is important in many environmental assist systems, including atmospheric chemistry, limnology, and ecology. So the inputs that I need is I need to know the area of the tub. So that's basically the, we're going to assume the tub is a square or a rectangle, and that the bottom of the tub is flat. And this tub is um, 2 meters or 200 centimeters by half a meter, 50 centimeters. And so I multiplied those together, and I got the area of the tub is 10,000 centimeters cubed. So you notice I'm labeling, I'm putting in a value, and then I'm putting in units. It's important that the units are in their own column because you can't multiply 10,000 centimeters squared by something. The 10,000 has a unit, but you don't want to put it in the same cell. Water inflow rate. So if you remember, this model is that water is flowing into a tub at a constant rate. Inflow, change in volume per unit time, is 10 liters per minute. So the inflow rate is 10 liters per minute. The water outflow rate constant is 1. So in this model, the water flows out the drain. Negative d volume dt is equal to negative k, which is a first order rate constant, times the height of the water. And that makes good sense. The higher the water, the faster the water flows out the drain. So the people doing fluid dynamics may disagree with a simplistic treatment, but for our purposes, that's close enough. All right. Water flows in as a zero order process. It's a constant. Water flows out as a first order process. And it is only a function of the water height in the tub. Delta time. Delta time is 0.5. We can consider this the simulation time. In these numerical approaches, um, we're going to calculate the water level in the tub over, say, 20 or 30 minutes. Um, and to do the calculations, we're going to set dt not to an infinitely small value, but to a reasonable value that allows the simulation steps um, to work. Now that is a bunch of uh, weasel talk if I've ever heard it. Um, but basically I want dt to be sort of less than 1% of the total step that I might expect in this problem. And I put it in as an uh, input so I can play around with it. And, and I'll show you how that works um, a little bit later. And then the starting volume. The starting volume is the volume of the tub and I'm going to start it at uh, 200 or excuse me, I'm going to change it from 200 to 0 liters. Okay, so now I'm ready to go. Uh, inflow again is dv dt, it's 10. Outflow is negative dv dt, uh, minus k times the water. Okay, so let's get started with the calculations. I'm going to do a series of calculations moving down in this spreadsheet, and I've labeled the row, the column names, time, inflow, outflow, volume in liters, volume in centimeters cubed, and centimeters. This would be the water height in the tub in centimeters. So let's see how we get started. Well, time zero is pretty obvious. I'm going to start with a zero. The inflow into the tub is going to be equal to the water inflow times delta t. Delta t is half a minute, so half a minute times 10 liters per minute is 5. Notice I have dollar signs in front of these cells. The dollar signs fixes an absolute reference for C5 and C7, so that when I fill down, um, I don't change that address. 
the outflow, because I don't have any water in the tub, should be zero. And it is, because this equation is C dollar sign six, which is the outflow rate constant, times C nine, which is the starting water height. Now I'm not putting a dollar sign in front of this one, because in this is the only time I'm gonna use C nine. And then um, C seven, which is delta T. So I've got inflow, I've got outflow. So now the volume at the end of this time step is gonna be the starting volume, C8, plus the amount of water I added, inflow, minus the water, amount of water that left. So this is the conservation of mass. The amount of water in the tub is the amount you have, plus the amount you add, minus the amount you lost. Nothing more com simple. I then convert that into centimeters, so cubed, so I just multiply it by 1,000. There's 1,000 centimeters cubed in a liter. And the reason I do this is if I take centimeters cubed and divide it by the area of the tub in centimeters squared, I get the height in centimeters. And I need this for the next row. So here we go, F12 divided by C4. Now, this C4 should be an absolute address. So I'm going to hit Apple T to fix that C4. F12 is not an absolute address. I want that to increment up at, after every, uh, in every row, so I'm going to leave that as a relative address. And now I'm going to come down to the next row. So my time step is going to be 0.5. My inflow is going to be C5 times C7. So I'm putting in basically half a liter for every half a minute. My outflow now is a little bit different. It's C6, the rate constant times G12. Now it's not an absolute address, it's a relative address, and it's the height of the water in the tub from the previous time step. So I'm basically, it's as if I had a stopwatch running and I was just watching water run into the tub. So <clears throat> in this case, we now have a little bit of outflow because we now have a little bit of water. The volume is now, again, the, the amount I had from the previous step, so that's E12, plus the amount I added minus the amount I lost. So I almost get to 10 liters, but not quite, because now a little is flowing out. The volume and the height. So that's it. That's a simple steady state calculation. Okay, now that I've created the second row, I want to fill down. And something I want to show you is that the time in the second row is simply the time in the first row plus the time step. So time will increment up as we move down. Notice again the use of relative addressing. B12 is the time in the previous step and that's going to increase as we fill down. And C7 is the time step and we want that to be constant. So it's dollar sign C, dollar sign seven. So I'll highlight the rows I wanna fill down. I'll grab the lower right corner and I need to go down to about 112 to get to 50 minutes for my simulation. And we are done. These have now filled down, and each of these have filled down. And it's done. So notice now there's my time. My inflow is a constant. My outflow increases, and it's going to increase until it equals five. And that's going to be the steady state condition. The steady state condition is when the inflow equals the outflow. You can see this asymptotic, asymptotically reaching five. It takes about 45 minutes for this to reach five. But once it gets very close to five, 4.97, very close, um, the tub reaches its constant steady state volume of 10 centimeters. Now, of course, this is my simple model. If I wanted to play around with it, I could increase the inflow rate. If I do that, the tub should reach a new steady state that's higher. Change that to 20. And sure enough, my tub now fills to 20 centimeters. The graph doesn't look like it's changing. That's because it's auto-scaling here. Look at this. We can change the starting height. Let's assume our tub was a lake and it was starting the warm season after the spring floods. And so the lake was full of water. So it didn't have a starting height of zero, but it had a starting height of 200. 
edit undo. Let's put it in the right place. So I typed in the wrong place, I did edit undo. And now, notice it started high and came down to the steady state condition. In this case, it decreased in, in height because I started high um, and I'm still reaching this steady state condition. So in summary, I have built a simple numerical model where water flows into the tub at a constant rate. It flows out of the tub at a rate which is a first order function of height, pretty typical of a lake and many atmospheric processes. I can write the two differential equations for inflow and outflow. I have a numerical model that solves them using a technique called finite difference, finite meaning limited um, or, um, or small discrete difference and my finite difference in this case is half a minute. Um, I can play around with that but if I made them too big this wouldn't be a nice smooth curve it would be a very boxy curve and we talked a lot about that um, in general chemistry so you can go back and think about kinetics in general chemistry as to why we have to make this step small. <clears throat> Steady state is when inflow equals outflow and you can see that when these two are equal the water level doesn't change. That makes good sense because the volume is position before plus the amount you add minus the amount you lose. These two are equal and you're staying at the same volume. And then finally residence time. Residence time is a very helpful concept. It talks about how long an average water molecule would stay in this bathtub. And it's the volume divided by the flow. And I'll leave it to you to calculate the residence time. Residence time can be a little bit tricky because in this case the water height and therefore the volume is changing over time. So we usually talk about residence times only in the context of a steady state condition or under the context of a very specific condition. But uh, you can't just talk about residence time in general um, or you're going to get yourself into trouble because clearly in a leg flow can change with the season and volume can change with the season. So we have to be a little bit careful when we talk about residence time. It is still a useful construct in understanding how things mix and change in the environment. Well, clearly we're not going to be doing environmental chemistry in bathtubs. The purpose of this exercise is to give you a basic introduction to how we can do finite difference modeling to understand more complicated systems. And stay tuned over the course of the semester We'll build a number of these models. Models for ozone in the, in the troposphere, models for ozone in the stratosphere, the flux of metals into a lake, the flux of nutrients into the lake, um, and the flux of energy um, and heat through a system. And we're going to use many of these similar tools, so it's important you understand this exercise completely so that you're set up for the exercises, the more chemically interesting exercises that we will be developing over the course of the semester.